Hey, this is Tip the Barber. This is Steve. We're at Barber Bros in Swartzville, Pennsylvania. We're going to be doing some beard work and a buzz cut today. It doesn't have to be perfect in the beginning because you're going to do a once over on every buzz cut just because there's always extras sticking up. And just like with any other cut, comb after you go through the hair. There's typically a swirl on the back of the head here. So you have to follow whichever way the hair is going. You want to go against the grain. This haircut fell off for a couple years, but it's starting to come back. A lot of military guys, law enforcement, a lot of people think the haircut should be quick and easy, but should still take as much effort as any other haircut you're doing. Now that I have the top set, I can put my trimmer line in. And I'm going to start the trimmer line at exactly where I stopped with the clipper. I'm just gonna do a slight drop. Just adds a little bit of dimension to the haircut. And I'll just use the trimmer to set the skin for when I take the hair off later at the end of the haircut. I'll go back to my babeless clipper and I will smooth out this area. This is going to be used with a two open. And that's going to go into the three closed, which is on top, just to help create the top of the blend. Now, as I cut here, I don't let the clipper go into the hair on the top. I take it right off the side of the head, so it's not leaving any lines or indents. And then as I work my way down, I move the clipper with the grain to create the blur. And as you can see, as I'm cutting, I'm not really hitting this area because we wanna keep that nice and dark to be able to add a little bit of definition right here with the C-curve. So I'll go up to right about there and just kinda of let that stay dark for the end of the haircut. And I'll follow the same method around the whole head to create an even blend. Buzz cuts could be very tricky. It could be pretty easy to chase the line up to the line up the head to, you know, if someone requests a low fade or a mid fade, you may end up giving them too high of a fade. So you have to watch where you're stopping the clipper or where you're coming off of the head to ensure you're create, keeping that even blend. And again, avoiding the front by the temple, just using that two to blend in that three. And continuing to comb the hair out to make sure you don't miss anything. Now I'll go down to my one and a half open. And this is where the fade starts to get tighter. So you can't move the clipper as much 
and you start to do a little bit more of a flicking motion using minimal teeth on the clipper to create a smaller margin for air. And as you can see, I'm still avoiding that front. As I get down to the one and the half and then skin, I'll move closer to that temple area to fade it out. Again, the back could be very tricky for some haircuts with the occipital bone, but his is pretty even, which means I could pretty much put the line anywhere on his head and it won't create any difficulties for the blend. This would be considered, I would say, in between a mid and a high fade. Holding the ear out of the way, so I'm not hitting it with the clipper, and also I'm able to see, kind of takes some shadows away also. I'll go to my one open, and this is where I go and switch from a comb to a brush, and that's to actually brush the hairs off of the scalp, and I could see any loose hairs or lines that I'm missing. So with the one, I'll only use just the tip of the blade and the corner. And the tension as I get closer to skin pretty much gets cut in half because the lighter you use the clipper I think it's easier to feather in the blend. Continuing the same guide around not taking my one too far up into the head because I don't want to chase it up like I said before. The tighter you keep the fade, the better this haircut looks, even though it's considered a pretty simple haircut. Always remembering to brush out. Move the head around also because shadows casting could look different with the head tilted. So you just want to make sure from all angles that the fade looks good. And now I'm just kind of going in with the corner with the one to get out some shadows. This is the most important part of the haircut, it's the half guard, I think. To me, it's this is where you make the mistake of either chasing it up or keeping it where it's at. And just slowly flicking out. Making sure you're not going up into the darker hair. slowly watching the blend and you can see where you need to open it back up and go back in with the teeth to get any shadows that might be in that lower side of the one guard or the one and a half guard and again just lightly feathering this blend trying not to chase it up I'm paying attention to my clipper teeth to keep consistency throughout the whole haircut Before I go down to skin, I'm just making sure my initial cuts with the half guard are blended out to where I like it, so I can continue with the haircut. Now I'm going to switch to my magic clip. The reason why I could use this also with the Babeless is because I have the same blade on both clippers, so that's why I'm able to go from the Babeless down to the magic clip. Also the clipper's lighter so it makes it easier to get this bald line out. So with just the corner, I'm going to slowly cut through the hair and create this final blend. Sometimes you will end up using a little bit more teeth because it's easier to flick out like that. I just like to use the corner. I've said it a couple times just so my margin for error is lessened. Chase to the back. As you can see, the head shape does have some difficulty there, but 
as long as you pay attention and flick out the head on the clipper, you should avoid any indents or white, any white lines you may put in to have to chase the hair, haircut up the head a little bit more. If someone really has a difficult head, you can always just go above or below the occipital bone, but that takes away if they want to request a specific haircut. And I'll pull the skin to kind of see any lines that I may have missed. And I'll just throw the one and a half back on, go open. And the same flicking motion just to get this final bit of bulk out of this haircut for the finished product. finish fixing up these shadows and we will go once over to kind of get these little stray hairs taken care of and this is the same method just flicking off the head making sure you're not chasing up the haircut I will just go down to my half for the occipital bone See right here. There's still a line. I'm gonna go half guard open. And just slowly take out that blend. And I'll just go in every direction possible on the top of the head here just to get any of those extra hairs that are still, you know, we consider them stragglers, it'll always happen at the end of a buzz cut, so. With the grain against the grain. Go to the two again, open. Without going into where the three is, just blending down the rest of this hair. Right where we left the bulk here, you'll see exactly what I'm going to do. I start here at the end of the C curve. I'm going to keep it as natural as you possibly can, brush it out, and just take as small as you possibly can. You can lead with the front tooth and just slowly start to curve. And then do the cleanup with the back of the blade. And now at the end, when I'm finishing up the beard, I'll blend this little demarcation out and that'll give us our C-curve for the haircut. And I'll take this extra hair off. Just to finish the suspense builder. I can hear the cheers now. <laughs> And I'll leave the top of the beard where the sideburn is. I'll take that off when I'm doing the beard. And then I like to use my babeless trimmer to actually take it down to as close to skin as possible. This will take off any of these shadows you see where I just hit with my other trimmer. And I'll feather this out with the half guard open. And that'll leave the darkness 
for the C-curve adds a little bit of dimension to the haircut and the beard. Just like that, the buzz cut is finished and we will start with the beard. Now I'll use the curved shears. This will help keep the shape of the beard. I'll turn his head to the desired side I need to cut. And this will actually help keep a nice curved look to the beard. I think curved looks a little bit more natural. And also with the way his beard grows, it just complements the shape. Again, following what I was doing with the shears, I'm starting to round when I get to the end of the beard. And if I see anything I may have missed with the shears, I'll, I could go in with the clipper and just kind of clean that up. And all I'm gonna do is pretty much from the bottom of the ear up, start to take a little bit of the bulk down. I'll do three open and I'm coming from the bottom of his ear in between his eye and his temple. And that's to prevent me from creating a line here in the beard. And I'm just using the outside teeth. I'll go down to my two open and use the same method. Continue to the one and a half open. And this is why I left the hair so high up on the beard here, so I could actually fade it in because Steve here likes to take it to a point. So I don't fade it all the way down the skin, but I still like to bring it down so in two or three weeks it's not sticking out past his ears. So I leave this hair here to make it easier to fade it in while you're working on the beard. And then with the half, adjust the corner of the teeth the half, I start going from here and I start to actually fade this way because this hair is on the scalp so you have to cut it just like it's the hair in the haircut and not the beard. So as I get closer to the top of the beard, I start cutting like I was doing the haircut and not the beard work. And I'll leave it a little shadowed there because that will help me leave a nice defined point for his beard line. Put that initial line in. And now I can go to working on the cheek area and matching it up with the other side. And after every like one or two swipes, I'll just take a good look just to kind of make sure I'm following the same guideline.
turning his head away from me. I'm going to try to match the top of the beard with the ear for the point. But what I do first is the C curve because I would like to bring this in to the beard to match it. Pulling the skin using the whole blade but putting most of the tension on the inside corner. And then I'll use the opposite corner. Just lightly feathering these hairs off the top cheek. The closer you get to the line here, you want to use more tension. Old Money, definitely my favorite styling balm. And all I'm going to do is apply this to the beard. I go through all my fingers just to make sure I'm getting it everywhere. And kind of like grab and pinch. Get your fingers under the surface hair. So that is a buzz cut. It's a three all the way down to skin. This right here is going to be a foil shave. And then this was just a little bit of beard work, just some light maintenance, taking off any extras sticking past the beard with a sharp line. So giving it a natural look, but also kind of like the new sharp edges. We'll get the old school beard with the new school look. Dude, you want simplicity? Grab the Styling Balm. It's designed for your hair and your beard. It will give a satin finish with a medium hold. No, it's not a conditioning product. It's a styling product. Styling Balm over at beardbrand.com.